So again, good morning. My name is Lindsay Ratliff and I'm the Director of Enrollment Management here at Fountain Valley School. Um, this is actually my first year at Fountain Valley, but I have spent the last 18 years working at boarding schools um, in the United States and always in admissions. Um, so I know I've chatted with a few of you already and, and look forward to meeting many of you through this admission process. Um, and really our opportunity today is to share more about what, you know, I believe are our distinctive academic programs at Fountain Valley School. Um, as you know, I think we're located in a beautiful part of the, of, of the country, Colorado Springs. We take advantage of our, you know, immediate 1100 acres, but also um, the extending city of Colorado Springs and then what you're going to learn today about is sort of how we we go beyond and you know go to different parts of the world and have these great connections and opportunities um, you know for your students to explore and learn more um, for their futures so you know with further ado um, i'm going to pass it over to aiden and, and let others introduce themselves Hi, so my name is Aiden. I'm a senior and I'm a day student from Woodland Park. I'm a leader in Round Square Club, girls so varsity soccer. I'm a peer leader, member of Frolicker Society, Business Club, the Student Culture Organization. I'm a founding member of the newspaper. Um, I'm in the BIPOC affinity group, Poetry Out Loud competitions. And in my free time, I enjoy reading, gardening, and baking. So like everyone here, I'm a very active member of the community. So I'll just pass it on to Mr. Walker now. Rookie mistake, always, un always unmute yourself. Um, my name is Simon Walker. I'm the director of the Round Square program here. That's why I'm really on this call. But I've been at Fountain Valley for 10 years. I've been in these boarding school situations for over 30 years. Um, I teach history, I coach soccer. Um, welcome, to, uh, welcome to this call. I hope that you find out a great deal about our very distinctive and very innovative programs. Uh, Ms. Oliver Barton, over to you. Hi, I'm Mrs. Oliver Barton. I'm a parent of a 2017 graduate. I've been here for seven years. I am the, I, I live in the library, so I'm the head librarian, but I'm actually the director of global and tech integration, which means I help with a lot of the global events, um, meaning we try to get you off campus even during the week. We go to Colorado College, we go to the Colorado Springs World Affairs Council or other activities that are in town like TEDx or the Rocky Mountain Women's Film Festival. Um, and I also help with tech integration in the classroom. If a teacher needs help, I'll come in and help them with iMovie. Uh, picto chart, anything that they're doing that they're not as comfortable with um, that they want the students to learn about. Um, and of course, research for the library and all that good stuff. And I am an advisor to yearbook and I will send it over to Mr. Haupt. Uh, hi, my name is Jed Haupt and uh, this is my eighth year at Fountain Valley. Um, I am the chair of the history department. So I work closely with uh, Simon Walker there. Um, I'm also a, a boys house director. Um, I coach uh, mountain biking um, and uh, I'm heavily involved um, with all things global um, in, in the sense that I run uh, the Global Scholar Diploma Program, which is the primary reason why I'm here uh, to chat. So I work very closely uh, with Tony uh, on, the, on the global education components and, and also with uh, Simon Walker there uh, for uh, Round Square. So. It's kind of this uh, this 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 uh, conglomeration of, of different things that all kind of come together for global education. All right, Kat. Awesome. Hello, I'm Kat Baker, and I've been at Fountain Valley for seven years. I teach physics, astronomy, robotics, and engineering. And in the afternoons, I'm the theater tech director, and I'm also the coordinator for the LG. BTQIA plus affinity group. And uh, additionally, I'm the director of our interim program, which is what I'll be here to talk to you all about. Uh, thank you all. And I'll pass it back to Ms. Ratliff. Thanks, Kat. So our goal with all of these virtual events is to make them as interactive as possible. So don't be afraid if you've got a question, especially today, since we're covering four really amazing topics, you know, feel free to unmute 
add a question to the chat box and I will make sure it gets to the right person um, so that we can continue to answer your questions as they come to your, your top of mind. Um, so, you know, that's, that's what I want to encourage you to do today is, is make this engaging, ask those questions. Um, and so we'll have time throughout as well as at the end. Um, so I think, Kat, I'm going to pass it back to you and you're going to kick us off with sort of our, um, our section on, on the interims that I know are quickly approaching. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, so yes, I'm here to talk about interim, uh, and that is a one week program that we do each March where the whole school, all of the students and the faculty, we push pause on our regular academics and we do so so that we can leave campus and experience something that we wouldn't otherwise be able to do with our normal schedule. This year we have 20 different interim offerings and uh, the students have been able to choose from things such as backpacking in southern Utah or exploring the biodiversity of the Channel Islands off of the south coast of California. In general, we offer several categories of trips such as adventurous ones, scientific explorations, language immersion, cultural and historic trips, and artistic and creative endeavors. Each year, the faculty suggests trips based on their passions and their skills, and a committee will select which trips that we'll actually be able to run. Uh, we choose the trips so that we can offer a wide variety of locations, curriculum, types of trips, and also cost. Each interim will have 10 to 14 students and two faculty leaders, uh, and they will meet several times a year in preparation for their trips. This year, all of our interims are staying domestically, but we do hope to resume international travel as soon as it is safe to do so. Some of the takeaways that alumni have cited about interim include the bonds that they create among their classmates, oftentimes seeing each other in a new light and gaining a greater appreciation for each person in their group. Many of the trips involve students trying new things for the first time, and seeing the students support each other as they go through these challenges has been a very rewarding experience. It is also important to us that students are able to escape the FES bubble and learn about the world around them and their place in it. My favorite interim so far that I've led has been the modern technology versus ancient culture in Japan interim. Uh, we learned about uh, some advances in robotics from some of the top engineering firms and then would walk down the road uh, just a short ways and see temples that were over 700 years old, still residing right in the heart of Tokyo. We were able to ride around on modern personal transport robots and then also see a robot that was originally built in the 1850s. It was uh, designed to deliver a cup of tea and then return to get back a new cup of tea. Uh, it was powered through wind up spring and used gears and counterweights to accomplish the task. It was just amazing to see, even from the 1850s, the level of technology that was in use. The whole week included things that I and the students never would have been able to experience here on campus, which is why I'm passionate about providing these experiences to students each year. Even when we had to stay in Colorado last year, we were still able to provide experiences such as learning blacksmithing or how to weld, building a house for Habitat for Humanity, and going to the sand dunes and painted mines to look at Colorado's unique geology. Uh, next up, we will hear from Aiden about her interim experiences. All right, so as I mentioned, I am a four-year senior, which uh, is kind of, it's kind of rare to have gone on interim at this point right now. So I'm lucky enough to have actually experienced a real interim. I went on Art in the Wild my freshman year. And I think that our interim is particular to Fountain Valley because it teaches you how to think and not what to think. You know, that's what FBS is all about. It's about thinking critically and trying new things and finding your path in life and finding interests like through these programs. So the great thing about interim is that it's accessible to every single student, which is incredible. And so I got to go on Art in the Wild and we stayed in Colorado, but we went snowshoeing and we went around and we went 
we painted and it was actually a really good experience. And I made some of my closest friends who I'm still friends with to this day on that trip. Did someone have a question? Sorry, okay. So um, yeah, so it was a, it's kind of an enlightening experience for kids. I mean, honestly, they can like, you can kind of just put it as a trip, but really it is, you're paying for this experience and you gain so much knowledge about the world, about your peers and everyone brings their own strengths. So you kind of meet people on a different level. And my next trip was actually going to be mountain biking in Utah. And that was going to be a very grit filled trip. It was gonna be a pretty tough one. And already in the interim meetings, I got to meet a lot of students who I hadn't even seen before. Um, being very academically focused, but it's, um, yeah, it's a very cool trip. And as much as some people almost think of it as a vacation, you learn so much. And I mean, you get to go to some pretty cool places. So it's kind of a vacation in the cool way, but you are learning about the cultures where you're going to. I mean, I have friends who went to Japan, um, they've graduated, but I've had, I have friends who went to Japan. I have friends who went to Morocco and you see the cultures and you experience the cultures. Um, so this year I'm actually going to Puerto Rico, which I'm really excited about. And I'm going on the Spanish immersion trip. So we'll be speaking Spanish the entire time. Um, so that's kind of why it's, I mean, it's a very important aspect of FBS. I think that it's more than just a selling point. It's, it's a, it's integral, it's crucial because you learn so much about yourself and it's what the school kind of stands for. And what I'm saying, I know I've said this, but how, um, kind of how to think, not what to think. So passing this on to Miss Barton. Before I go, are there any questions from anyone regarding interim? It is really fun. I've been to Dominican Republic, Thailand, uh, Southern Utah, and I did some virtual ones that we kind of uh, explored um, an African country and people around the United States when we were virtual. So you can do a lot of fun stuff. Um, and this year I'm doing sports on the front range, so a wide array. So um, when I introduce myself, I forgot to mention because it's not really in my title. I also uh, help with the capstone project. And here today, I'm here to talk about the capstone project. And it is a project for all seniors. It is a requirement of graduation and all seniors get to choose. And we really work with you your junior year to find out what you're interested in and what you might wanna do your senior year. It is a class that you will be enrolled in and you will go to every other day, like every all your other classes. But the object of that class is to you to learn something that you want to learn. And as seventh or eighth graders, I'm sure this is way off in the distance, but it's kind of a fun thing. You can pick a topic of something that you've already learned here and you wanna learn more about, or you can pick a topic that you want to learn into the um, college career of yourself. So you could choose if you're going into medicine or you wanna go into medicine, you can choose a medicine related field. And it's just really a great opportunity for you to push your own learning and learn yourself. Um, so junior year, you kind of start to decide and Mr. Hop and Quinn are gonna talk about the Global Scholar Diploma, um, but part of it is you could apply to become part of the Global Scholar Diploma. Um, and if you do that, it is an application process um, and Mr. Hop and I kind of walk you through that and uh, figure out if you're a good fit for that or if your project is a good fit for that. Because sometimes we have students who are a great fit for it, but they don't always have an interest in um, a global project. Um, if you don't choose GSD, which again, we're gonna talk a little bit more about later, you, you do a senior project and your junior year, you have to do a proposal for what you think you wanna do so that we can start thinking about it and talk to you about it. Um, our juniors can always change their mind after the fact, but we want them to think about one project very in-depthly so that they can decide if that's what they wanna do. Um, and so some of the projects that we've had in the past kind of reach all over the place. And I'm, I am going to give you a link to um, so that you can see our website and can see some of the projects. But um, when we first started, we had students who one did an audio book. Um, her passion was literature and theater. And so she recorded an audio book. We've had students write books themselves. Um, we've had students create a short video game. 
we had a student um, work with the Nature and Wildlife Center in Pueblo to study the rehabilitation process for the various raptors that come into that area. And then we also had someone who was working on sports injuries with a local um, uh, doctor to find out what the actual physical therapy, what are the benefits and what are the research aspects of physical therapy. Um, we, we've had people even just do plain research projects like the history and culture of spearfishing. So as you can tell with some of these, they are kind of all over the place. And you can also do a creation one. We've had people work on their ceramic craft or their jewelry making craft because again, they've taken those classes here and they just wanna do a little more. Um, so again, you this is a second semester, your senior year, you will be enrolled in a class and the, the teacher really won't be teaching anything except for goal setting and research and uh, project skills. Um, so it's very project based and we just kind of help you. Uh, I feel like I'm one of the teachers and so is Mr. Hopp and a lot of it is goal setting and making sure that you're getting to where you need to be uh, during the semester. So I am going to hand it over. It looks like there's some questions. So maybe we should pause and take some of the questions. There we go. I forgot to unmute myself. <laughs> um, so this kind of goes back to um, Kat a little bit about interim, but you know, let's let's do it right. When do um, students select their interim? And, and maybe Aiden, do you want to answer that one too? Yeah, I can answer that a little bit. So, uh, like Miss Baker said, it's kind of. Um, Interim is in March, so it's announced in September. And from September until March, you have meetings with the group and the teachers that you will be going on your trip with. And you make your selections in October. And the selections are by seniority, like uh, the priority goes to seniors make selections and then juniors make selections and then sophomores and so on. And I mean, that way you kind of upgrade the caliber of trip every year that you're here, just because you wouldn't want to go on an international trip your freshman year and just be thrown into the wild. <laughs> so it's kind of like you start um, with, and I mean, all of the trips are equally amazing, but you start off a little smaller and then eventually you grow into these amazing trips, Morocco, et cetera. Great. Yeah, and I'll add, I did post a link to the interim website on the main Fountain Valley School website, and that lists some of the trips that we've done in the past. Uh, a handful of those are running again this year, uh, so you can check out a lot of the other options that we've ran. Thanks. And Jed, do you want to speak about Global Scholars? There, I think Tony has a question. Oh. Yeah. Emily, um, yeah, it can be something that has nothing to do with school. And I'm, I'm trying to think, I mean, we've had students do um, lots of different projects that weren't in the school realm. You know, we try to teach as many different things here as we can. We love when teachers have specialties and, um, you know, Miss Baker does engineering and robotics and we love when we can get those specialty things, but we can't always do things. So especially for kids who wanna push it to the next level. The library does have a maker space. And one example of that is that we have had a student work on 3D printing. Um, he is, um, wait, who was it? The, the student last year, she did a gear because she rides a unicycle and she wanted a gear for her unicycle. So she actually created it out of 3D Printing. And then before that, I feel like we had one other one that was working on 3D printing. So um, you can definitely, it can be something at school or something at home. It can be really anything. Um, the only, I guess I, I'll add, the only requirements is that we do ask that you have some research base of it. So if it is a project, um, a, a good example is last year, we had someone who wanted to build a um, model airplane. Um, I think he thought it was gonna be an easy project and it ended up being one of the harder projects, uh, which is kind of fun, um, but he had to interview someone regarding it. And so we ask you to do some research regarding it. And even if it's something like building something, we want you to learn a little bit about it and have some kind of an academic, academic aspect to it. So hope that answers your question. And maybe I'll give a second to just see if anyone's brave enough to unmute and ask a question before we, we move on. Okay. 
Right. Do they have to present after they're done? They do. You know, like to the to the school or to to like is it is it something that you're sort of coming back and showing so it's more like an experience that you'd get later on in college? <laughs> Yeah, so um, Jed will talk a little bit about the Global Scholar part of that, but this year will be the first year that everyone will present to the whole school because the last few years we have had issues and we've been building the program. So last year we did them virtually and we invited, classes came um, and uh, you know your advisor sometimes came. Um, so they were virtual last year and we did have a lot of people visiting, but this year it, we will be taking time out of our academic day and people will be presenting. And the senior projects, you can either um, write a paper if you really want to, you can present a regular presentation, or you can do kind of a um, showcase, like a, a science fair science fair kind of board. Um, we'll have it set up in the gym and people will be able to kind of walk around and you'll just be able to talk about your project. Or even we're giving them the option of a shorter presentation, depending on what your project is, you know, you want to present it in different ways. So you will, they will have an opportunity to present it. Um, and all of the GSD and the senior projects um, have to have a website. So that's also nice for colleges because they can work on that website ahead of time, um, especially for GSD they do, and they can send it to the colleges they're applying to. Thank you. Okay, I have a question. Um, this is Ruth. So the timing of the capstone, you said was second semester senior year. So does that mean that the kids can't submit to science fairs and things? Or um, is there an opportunity to, to play in some of the big science fairs if they wanted to? We haven't had anyone do that in the past, but we, we can definitely look at it. It is second semester their senior year. So for that reason, it might be a little more difficult. Thanks. And are there opportunities for more in-depth research in the junior year or not necessarily? Yeah, we also have, I mean, I, I, I guess it's kind of a distinctive program. We have, um, you can uh, ask the academic coordinator if you can take a class that we don't offer here or study something that we don't offer here. Um, and so I know, Kat, maybe you can talk about the one that you've done with Scott Lebo. Yeah. Sure, we offer a directed studies program, which is an independent study type project where if we don't offer a class in a subject, a student can do their own uh, research. They'll have a faculty member who they're working with. Um, so I'm actually working with three students right now. Uh, two are doing engineering projects. One is looking at architectural engineering and one is looking at mechanical engineering. And then I have a third student who it's also engineering related, but he's designing a mountain bike so that as you ride the mountain bike, it actually plants uh, little saplings uh, to have mountain bikers help reforest uh, the areas that we have here in Colorado. We've had um, some areas with large burn uh, wildfires uh, that have kind of devastated some of the regions. And so he's working on trying to help reforest connecting with his love of mountain biking. And he's actually working with a mountain biking company in Colorado Springs uh, so that he can actually engineer and build uh, this mountain bike that he's creating. Um, so we really can take whatever the student interest or passion is uh, and create a, di a directed study course for them. And we've had even sophomores do that. So it, depending on your schedule, it's usually juniors and seniors who do that. Um, but we definitely, I know we've had, um, we had a few years, last year, we had a group that were working on a video game together and the director of technology, John Lichtenberg was helping them. And they all had different parts of the video game to be doing to put it all together. All right, I think I am up um, if there are any other questions. And obviously, if, if, if questions come to mind, please don't uh, hesitate to, to jump in there, even if it's not directly related to um, what I'm specifically talking about, but we can certainly circle back on, on various things. So um, I'm here to talk about uh, specifically the Global Scholar Diploma Program, uh, which is an, a kind of a, an offshoot or, or an element of what Tony was talking about with the Capstone pro, uh, Program. So um, we have uh, uh, historically had a number of students 
um, who uh, have been uh, intensely interested in uh, issues of globalization and um, uh, matters of the world that uh, that they would like to dive into into um, in, in a way that is uh, uh, rigorous and is uh, research based and uh, solution based and um, really looking at uh, uh, global issues such as climate change or uh, macroeconomics or uh, cultural evolution or um, um, uh, elements of, of, of those kinds of, of, of areas of focus where they want to take um, uh, propose a project and, and really delve into uh, that project in a very academically driven sort of way. So uh, the way that we talk about uh, GSD is that uh, essentially uh, students, by the time that they finish their GSD project, um, that they have produced uh, what I would probably label as like even like a, a sophomore or junior uh, college level piece of work. Um, and, and they have generally four options to, uh, to work with, and that's producing a 25 to 30 page uh, research paper, um, producing a uh, half an hour podcast, um, making a similar length uh, documentary, or, or presenting a formal uh, presentation to a group of um, uh, of, of, of faculty members and, and students who are then uh, will then uh, give them uh, questions to answer and things like that. Uh, every single project uh, at the end of the spring of their senior year uh, will sit before a panel um, to uh, quote unquote defend uh, their project. Um, and um, so in that in that sense, it's similar to uh, a thesis, a college thesis or a graduate school type thesis project that is distilled down uh, to to the high school level. Um, so and many, uh, many of the students who, who choose to uh, tackle the GSD program will then go on uh, to study these same um, uh, topics, subjects, themes uh, in college, and they use uh, the uh, Global Scholar Diploma Program here at Fountain Valley as kind of a springboard uh, to uh, larger studies um, that they'll do in college and, and, and even career. Uh, for many people, these are, uh, um, they're uh, very passionate about these uh, types of um, uh, subject matter that they dive into and, and, and various, um, just, uh, um, you know, they, they see this as a lifelong passion. All right. So I do want to uh, sh just share before I forget, I'm going to uh, share my screen here. Um, and, um, and, and just kind of with the, the, the portal here um, that we use, kind of the, the Global Scholar Diplo Diploma Program. And, um, this is kind of the, this is the homepage. This is available through the uh, uh, through the Capstone website as well. And um, so the program overview, right? This is basically a year and a half long uh, process. Um, as Tony mentioned, students need to apply for it. They sit down for a formal interview. Uh, they have to come up with a, a proposal uh, for work. Um, and uh, then their senior year in both the, the fall semester and the spring semester um, are kind of working toward uh, that project there. So um, here are some of the elements that, um, th that uh, comprise the Global Scholar Diploma Program. It's not just, uh, just the program itself. There's also an expectation of community uh, involvement and leadership, um, but uh, this kind of shows uh, kind of that uh, th that uh, sequence from the junior year uh, to the senior year. All right. Um, <clears throat> now the um, I can also show here um, within this uh, program here. Um, if I pull up last year's um, program here, we can see a uh, number of just the titles that um, of, of last year's projects here. And uh, hopefully everybody can kind of see that. Um, but um, I know it's kind of small here, but every, we, had, we had all sorts of projects, everything from um, uh, examinations of, of racism in Italy uh, to uh, the elements of, in, of, of women in prison um, and com uh, comparison between American system uh, with uh, a Norwegian system system. 
um, Isa Fernandez, uh, who is Venez of, of Venezuelan uh, uh, ancestry. I mean, she looked at the history of Venezuela and kind of uh, looking at uh, what's happened in that country with uh, corruption and, um, and, and, and government uh, control there. Um, and um, um, uh, examinations into education um, and <clears throat> uh, lots of different things. So we do have a lot of international students who do participate and a lot of uh, uh, those uh, international students kind of examine their own countries uh, from kind of a Western or American lens there. Um, but, um, and, and so you can kind of uh, peruse uh, those, uh, those elements there. But I want to turn over uh, to, let me stop sharing my screen here. And uh, let's see here, how do I get out of this? Okay, stop there. Uh, I'm going to turn over to uh, Quinn, all right, who is uh, here on our, um, where is Quinn? Do I see Quinn? Um, and um, am I missing something? Is Quinn, did, did Quinn leave? No, He's Quinn's down here. further, okay. Oh yes, okay. Whatever on my screen, I don't, I don't see him, him listed there. But uh, Quinn, I will mute. mute. Uh, Quinn is a current senior uh, and is currently working on a very fascinating uh, GSD project that kind of is going into a different uh, a direct direction than a lot of our other projects. So, uh, Quinn, uh, the floor. Oh, there you are, Quinn. Uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hopped, um, and good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, so like Mr. Hopp said, um, Quinn Lander, I'm a senior in the GSD program. Um, and so just a little overview of my project. Um, my project is basically about remediating the landfilling processes of the sort of waste management industry of the Western world um, to be more sustainable um, and doing this through a mycological lens, if that makes sense. So. Sort of the biggest parts is landfills cause, you know, groundwater pollution, um, soil pollution, um, and then just a massing of sort of toxic, wasteful materials. Um, and then just sort of the ways in which we can use fungi in order to um, mitigate these ill effects of landfilling. Um, sort of within the framework that already exists within the industry uh, is sort of the goal of my research project. And sort of to point out, Emily had a question about this, but I have never taken a mycology class at FES. Um, this is totally my, my own accord and my own interest, right? And so you can really explore something that you have an academic interest outside of school completely. Um, and I, I know I've really appreciated this program. I think it's done a lot for me. Uh, I think one of uh, Mr. Hopdad said this, but it, it it really is sort of an insight into college level work, um, if that makes sense. And that's both in workload and sort of the loose time, you know, the loose deadlines, um, if that makes sense. And it really, really forces you to take your time management into your own hands, which is something I've really appreciated. Um, and it's really helped me is it's sort of, it's definitely, um, you know, all your due dates are sort of far off in the future and you can procrastinate, but it really forces you to manage your time on your own accord, right? And not say, oh, well, Miss so-and-so said I have to turn this in by Thursday, but no, like this is all due at the end of the semester. How are you going to do it? Um, it really, I mean, I obviously haven't gone to college yet, but I, it's really prepared me, I feel, and it's really helped me learn those time management skills that are going to be integral um, in your college career. Um, and yeah, that's, but I, I, I have really enjoyed the program and I've really enjoyed, but sort of like I said earlier, like you can really explore and delve into um, something that you're passionate about and something you have an interest in, like completely outside of uh, your schooling here at FES and just do something that's completely your own. Um, and I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I've forgotten anything, but yeah. Quinn, maybe I can ask you just, um, do you mind kind of sharing where you're from and some of the activities you do? At Fountain Valley. Oh yes, maybe that yeah. might spur a couple um, questions as well. Yeah, so I, I am in GSD, but I, I do a lot of other things here in the community. Um, I'm from I'm from Morgantown, West Virginia. That's all the way over on the East Coast. Uh, yeah, I'm a senior. I've been here for three years. 
Um, and so as well as being uh, part of the GSD program, um, I'm an RA, I've been an RA for two years, um, residential assistant, which is basically as a boarding student, um, you sort of help things run smoothly with your house director uh, in the dorm and everything. Um, I am on the honor council. We have an honor council program here, which is just like a disciplinary board and we get the students involved, which I think is an important part of the community. Um, and I'm also the, an editor of Athenea. Um, and Athenea is a really interesting literary magazine we have here um, that's mostly student run. We have a faculty sponsor in the English department, but um, we just had our publication come out for the, for the fall, which is pretty exciting. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, but yeah, and so sort of all those GSD requirements is you really need to be sort of like a whole student. Uh, yeah, like you can't just only the academic side, like there are leadership requirements. Um, and I, I think that's important um, for, and it really elevates the program, I think, as all those people coming out of the GSD program are not only very academically strong, but leaders in their community. Um, and yeah. Um, so yeah, th those are a couple of things I do add to the GSD. Great, thank you so much. Maybe we can pause and see if there's any questions about the Global Scholars Diploma. I had a question about the coursework. Can you talk a little bit about what kind of classes, since all their projects are quite different, what kind of classes would go towards those approved courses? Um, excellent question. Uh, thank you. Um, we, in, when the course catalog uh, comes out and, and students are, are choosing their classes, um, there's a little icon uh, that appears next to a number of classes. And I think, I don't know, it's close to probably, you know, half, a, a third to a half of classes overall um, count as uh, classes uh, toward the GSD requirements. So, um, you know, I, I mean, some classes are, would be relatively obvious. So, so for example, you know, a class like advanced world history um, or, or other kind of history electives that are kind of more international uh, Islam in the West um, and, 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 and other classes like that. Um, but a lot of our advanced or AP level classes um, also kind of fulfill some of those requirements as well, um, in addition to semester long elective uh, classes um, with the goal that uh, a lot of our kind of more rigorous uh, advanced or AP level classes uh, are addressing, uh, even through a science class, um, you know, certain topics that are applicable on a global scale and therefore will uh, enrich a student's uh, foundational understanding of of how the world works, right, either on a human level or on a scientific level. Um, and, and, and through that uh, kind of a variety of classes, um, that really were setting up those students uh, for success uh, in the GSD program. So, you know, usually students start thinking about uh, the GSD program even in their freshman year, and they've kind of, you know, they have this as kind of a goal of theirs that, um, that they're setting themselves up for um, as they get closer to their junior and senior year. So they will orient their class uh, selection around uh, kind of setting themselves up for that. But, you know, we do have a lot of students that come into Found Valley as uh, sophomores, as juniors, um, and, and it, can be, it can be a little more challenging for them that they have to come in and kind of immediately uh, start chipping away uh, at those uh, requirements for those globally oriented uh, classes uh, right off the bat. Um, and, and so some students do come here specifically to look at, a, a, you know, to, to get into a program like GSD. And, and even during the pandemic, I mean, we had a Chinese student uh, who uh, was a brand new student to FES last year, had never set foot on campus. Um, did the entire last year um, virtual um, and and yet uh, applied for GSD, uh, got accepted, um, you know, oriented her class schedule, and now she's on campus as a senior, and and she's uh, doing great. So uh, it can be done uh, for new uh, you know new juniors that come in, but it, it doesn't require a more kind of specific intentionality toward that. Um, 
so hopefully that hopefully that answers your question. Yes, thank you. Um, Other yeah, questions? I mean, if, if I could just add a little bit on to the back end of that, um, sort of with those those GSD required classes, um, is you can really going back to this sort of the idea of GSD sort of being academically independent is you can you can really fill those requirements with the fields you're really interested in, uh, right? So like. I have all my requirements and I've never taken an AP history course, right? Like you don't need to be in APs all across the board um, in all your classes and every kind of subject, right? Sort of like um, you said in your question um, talking about like different students have different interests and how the required classes work with that is sort of the field you're interested in generally, which has to do with your project, you can really get those GSD requirements because that's, you know, the academic field in which you have a passion for, um, right? So it, it is pretty independent and you, it's, it's really not difficult if you're an academically inclined person to fill those requirements, right? It, like if you are interested in your schooling and sort of the subject with which your topic or project has to do with, um, you know, you will really fulfill those, those requirements easily. Great, thank you. All right, Simon. I have sort of a, a quick question on that too, that I guess is more, what was the impetus for making the GSD? Like, why did you guys think that this was something you needed to do for uh, the I, students and things of that nature? I, I, I don't know that there is a concrete answer. I'm just curious what, what, what you guys are thinking about. Yeah, the founder no longer works here, but both Jed and I worked with her um, when she was here. Um, she was an English teacher and uh, she was really interested in it. Um, she had some, you know, children of her own who went here that were very global minded. Um, and she just felt like this is, we have to be global citizens. And I, I feel like a lot of our classes do this already. And that we kind of, because of Round Square, which we're gonna hear about next, and because of our interim, we definitely, produce global citizens. And, you know, one way reason to do the global scholars diploma is just like Jed had said, really get them prepared for going into uh, a lot of our students do go into international relations who do this, um, because that's what they're, you know, they might be interested in or another field that just relates to global issues. So it was created 12 years ago. Um, and we are one of the first schools um, that actually have this program. Um, we've presented it at a lot of conferences and a lot of schools are starting to do this, but it's, it just kind of is a little different than Capstone. And, you know, here it's always been a lot more academically strenuous than a, a regular senior project. Um, and we, we feel like it's a good distinction uh, for some of our students who are involved with Round Square and like to go on the global interims and it's kind of their way of finishing their year here strongly. Thanks. Ready, Simon? I think, yeah, I think we're ready for Simon. Oh, he just has to unmute. <laughs> you don't mind getting my presentation up there? Yeah, yeah I'm ready. Absolutely. Um, so another piece of the puzzle, uh, piece of the pie in terms of uh, our global programs is the Round Square program. Um, this, is, this is for all intents and purposes, a consortium of 250 schools. You can just keep rolling through the slides, Lindsay. Um, it's based around these ideals. Um, I may spell I-D-E-A-L-S. Um, as a school wanting to be a member, you, are, you have a, a visit of a couple of days um, you apply to the organization and they really assess to see that you are living these ideals in terms of your school culture and your, and your curriculum and your activities. Um, next one, please. Um, we were accepted in 2015, again, 250 plus schools. And it's really, it's really an international network. That, that, that is um, the true value of this is that not only are there activities and opportunities, but it is a, a true network of like-minded schools around the world. And uh, it's forever growing. There are every every week we get uh, a global email from Brown Square Central from London, and there are always schools applying. There was a, there are a couple in the Caribbean that have been accepted this week, um, a couple in China, and another one. I think I believe it's in um, I believe it's in Croatia. And so yeah, it is definitely you know the value of the network is extremely strong, and there are opportunities for all all uh, members of our community to be involved. Next one, please. 
So again, I'm, I'm gonna sort of do what uh, we tell students to do, which is not read everything from the slide, but I'll try to not quite do that. Um, what th th these, are, these are the opportunities that are available to students. We have a club that meets, um, that really looks to plan activities. And it's a great way for me to introduce um, the ideals of Round Square and really introduce um, the activities that are on offer. The, the crown jewel or the two crown jewels, I would say, um, are the exchanges and the conferences. Uh, we have usually, uh, or we have always run exchanges with a, a list of schools from mainly the Southern Hemisphere. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Um, we've had to pivot from the in-person to the virtual. Um, they, are, they are currently currently on hold. We're waiting for the world to settle and for the tolerance for global travel to improve before we dive back into those. Uh, the conferences, there is usually, a, there is always has been in person a global and a regional conference. Uh, again, we'll talk more about those in a second. Um, they, they really are the, well, they definitely are, are one of the major opportunities for travel. And travel is really, is really one, of, one of the essential elements of Around Square, which would show that we've, we've definitely done a fantastic job as an organization pivoting from physical travel to virtual. Uh, and we're probably not done, unfortunately. Um, the next one down there are the virtual postcards. We recently hosted one of these postcards. A postcard is essentially a mini conference. Um, and then there are also international service projects. We haven't been on one of those since 2019. Um, they are run by Round Square. They go to fantastic locations around the world. Uh, again, we're hoping that those resume. We've also been piloting with a couple of schools, a teacher visit program. Instead of a full year or semester teacher exchange, we have been piloting this two week um, on campus, full immersion, potentially some teaching, some coaching um, experiences for our teachers. And then the final piece again is we also have opportunities for students to once they've graduated, go to partner schools and become essentially a teacher for most of the school year. So that's just a very quick uh, overview. Next one, please, Lindsay. So what is a round square exchange? Um, it's, really, it's really that journey from being a tourist to a traveler. Uh, they're, they are usually around six weeks. We take in five, we, we have five spots. Um, so we, we select five of our students to be the hosts. Uh, there is an application process. They would then, uh, firstly, the way it runs for us is that would happen in the fall. In the winter, five students from other parts of the world, Southern Hemisphere schools, it works out for them because that's their summer break, would come to us between January or in January and February. They would live on campus. They would experience all that we have to offer. They would attend the classes. They would also select their own classes, which is fairly unique within the Round Square network. They wouldn't simply follow the schedule of their partner. They get to select their own classes. They get to play sports, um, either recreationally or for us, and they get to experience everything that we have to offer in the winter. And then in the spring or the summer, depending on the student's grade, our students would go and um, go back to the country of their partner and do the same. We're very fortunate, in fact, because our sophomores are excused the entire fourth quarter to do this. And so there is no issue of uh, missing school and worrying about matriculation, et cetera. Our juniors don't get that luxury. They need to go in their summer. And as I just put there as well, there's also, we've also been piloting with a few schools, uh, a one-way non-reciprocal exchange. If two schools are not able to accept um, or, you know, well, if, if two schools don't want to get into a really strong sort of reciprocal partnership, we can accept people and people can just go as a one way trip as well. Okay, next one, please. And here, here are some of our partners um, from left to right Scotch College in Perth, Belgrano Day School in Buenos Aires, uh, St. Cyprian's in Cape Town, South Africa, St. Constantine's in Tanzania. Bunbury Cathedral in Western Australia, Scotch Oakburn in Tasmania, Markham College in Lima, San Silvestre in Lima, and MLC in Sydney. These are our strongest partners. These are people with whom we have, have run exchanges of various types, and we look forward to working with them in the future. Next one, please. What is a conference? Well, conferences are usually in person. Um, we have been to, I personally have been to Cape Town, Ottawa, Lima, uh, we're hoping to go to London next year. We, well, COVID dependent. Um, they are, they are uh, an international symposium. Um, the one in Cape Town had over 1,200 students from around the world. 
Uh, they're hosted by usually now a group of schools, usually it's three schools, um, minimum two, who put together a student-run program of activities and days based around the ideals. They are incredibly immersive. Usually there are homestays involved, again, international travel. Um, students really benefit from these experiences. Next one, please. Um, yeah, okay, so in terms of one of the virtual pieces that we have had to pivot to, um, Round Square has been working with schools, um, asking them to host these mini conferences, these online conferences called postcards. We have attended many, many, many. They're usually, they've usually been on Wednesday mornings and there's quite a few in India and the subcontinent. And so Ms. Oliver Barton and I have had a lot of between 5.30 a.m. and 6.30 a.m. mornings where we've been involved in these. We decided to control the times a little bit and host our own. So we actually in console in, uh, in collaboration with the Environmental Protection Club, the Round Square Club um, hosted this about two and a half weeks ago, three weeks ago, One Planet, One Chance. We had over hundred students from 14 schools. We hosted it, we, uh, next slide, please. Um, this is just a one snapshot. Uh, Aiden was part of our leadership team there. She was one of the hosts. We uh, presented on personal and group responsibility related to climate change. This, this, this slide is from the presentation. Um, we presented and then we broke out into smaller groups for student-led discussions and then came back together. Uh, it was very well received. We're hoping we get a slot. It's very competitive. The first, the next time we might get a slot on the global stage is, I believe it's October next year, but we're planning, we're planning hard for that. Um, next slide, please. Uh, the service projects, uh, these are the last two we went on. Uh, we were supposed to go to um, Madagascar and Laos in 2020, but of course those didn't happen. These big builds, students apply, they're selected. Um, usually they will be put into groups. Uh, each one of these projects has 50 students. They'll be split into five groups with it, with it, with two leaders. So the ratios are very strong. Uh, they won't have any of their schoolmates in those groups. And they're essentially these big build projects where they're building, they're helping build irrigation systems, they're helping build churches and schools and various other buildings in local communities. Um, these differ from some of the more commercially available um, projects where there's a lot more recreation and tourism. These really are not tourism based. They are hard work and the students love them and they're three weeks long. And who, who knows when, they, when these will emerge, but we're hoping they will fairly soon. Next one, please. Um, this is a piece I touched on too. We've, we've uh, had a couple of these over the years. A lot of our partners around the world want to, they're openly advertising to have GAP post-graduation students come and essentially be faculty members, quasi-faculty members. Usually it involves, uh, obviously it involves a, an eight to nine month actual professional contract that the students would sign because they're now post-graduation free agents. They can earn a salary. Um, they have to work on their insurance and their visa, et cetera, to get into those countries where needed. But they're essentially living in, living in dorms, um, working with the students there. We had a boy recently who went to Tanzania and uh, his initial job was to be sort of, sort of a, a, I guess, an RA, getting the kids up in the morning and then he had the day free and then he had to run the evening. And they met him and they realized that in fact, this was not gonna suit him. So they essentially turned him into a teacher. Um, and so this boy was in um, Tanzania. So he was teaching, he was teaching science, he was teaching math, he was coaching a soccer team, and I believe he also co-directed a play. And so uh, that was all when living in Arusha, Tanzania. So those are opportunities that are out there. Um, next one, last one, I believe. This is something for the grown-ups here as well. We again we, we've been piloting within the global community these two-week exchanges. Um, I did one myself. I went down to um, the logo on the right there, Scotts College in Perth, and I spent two weeks living in their dorm, uh, working, doing uh, dorm duty, meeting the boys. I taught a couple of classes. Um, I coached a rugby team, had a lot of meetings with a lot of people. It was just outstanding. And the next logo there is the only one that we've had coming back. We actually had an art teacher who managed to get in and get out right before COVID became a pandemic in 2020, who again li lived on campus. Um, taught a lot of art classes, had a lot of meetings, had a lot of immersion with our, within our community. And so that, that, is, that is something that, that we're hoping we'll build. We have a promise of going back and having the reverse of those with those two schools. We also have opportunities for 
schools in Latin America to have more of a language-based immersion for our teachers as well. So that is the Round Square program, very immersive, very exciting. We've had to pivot pretty dramatically to online. Um, we don't have a definite return date for in-person, but the world is fluid. And so we hope to, to resume when we can. Thank you, any questions? Happy to field any and all. And Eden, do you wanna share your experience? Of course, yeah, Eden. Oh, absolutely. So I'll just talk really quickly, I mean, Mr. Walker, covered it fairly well, I guess. Um, but I'll just talk really quickly. Uh, so I'm kind of like uh, the student uh, face of the Round Square Club. So I was a, I did about 20 hours of training over the summer and I became a school rep in the international conference. And I gotta say, that's one of the best experiences that I've had. I mean, that concert hosted like, sorry, conference hosted 1400 delegates from 36 countries, I believe. So it is a completely immersive international experience. And as much as it's like, wow, I really wish I was in London right now, it's you almost forget that entirely. You're meeting new people. They have wide perspectives. And we talked about brave conversations. We talked about ethical leadership. We just talked about a lot of um, things that are applicable, applicable to everything. So then we did the postcard and I was me and a junior actually hosted that and we had, like Mr. Rocker said, 100 students from 14 different schools. That's from India to Australia. We discussed personal responsibilities in consumerism, and it was the one planet, one chance, uh, kind of a catchy tagline, but it was just about e the ecosystem and how what can we do for our Earth right now? And it was kind of a call to action. And I think that I mean, that's one of the best Barraza discussions I've ever had. And Barrazas are just small groups where you have really meaningful discussions. So, I mean, yeah, I, in my personal experience, I've learned how to mediate discussions. I've learned how to be a leader. I've learned how to maybe give people a little bit of, let's get this done <laughs> kind of thing. And you, these are just the fall events that I've participated in. And, you know, we have, who knows what the rest of the year has to hold. There are lots more postcards and that ranges from climate change, like we did to, um, uh, uniforms or a religion or personal beliefs, but it's, it's really interesting and it can really influence my path for college. I mean, I applied to a lot more international programs and I hope to actually do, um, an abroad thing through, um, Barnard college in Spain. So that's kind of how it's influenced me. I think Ransom is pretty good. So I'll just pass it on to Ms. Ratliff. Great. Well, I want to be respectful of everyone's time on a Saturday, but I do want to open it up maybe for any last minute questions before we wrap up. Great. Well, thank you again so much for joining us. Um, on this Saturday morning, you know, we've been trying to kind of organize different times and different days um, for our virtual events to kind of work with everyone's busy schedules and calendars. Um, and, and so just want to thank all of our panelists as well for your time on a Saturday um, and hope this was beneficial to learn a little bit about what I think is really distinctive in our academic program here at Fountain Valley. Um, stay tuned. Our next event will be in January, and I think this will be really an interesting one to tune in for. We're going to be um, speaking with our alumni around the country who are, you know, in college and beyond and sort of hear from them how Fountain Valley has been um, inspirational and, and really um, guiding them as they've followed their path after high school. So I hope you can join us in January. And again, thank you so much um, for your time today. Have a great day. Thanks for all your time.